they were talking about how to calculate reduction potentials or uh, um, cell potentials rather using standard reduction potentials. Um, usually when uh, electrochemical reactions are listed in indices of books or in the CRC, they're listed as reduction potentials, but not always. Uh, in a reduction potential, electrons are being added to an ion to reduce it to its metallic state or its elemental state, to be more accurate. And uh, they list the voltage alongside it. Typically, when the voltage is negative, it would mean that the reaction tends to run the other way. So you would write it backwards, put the electrons on the other side, and then reverse the, the um, give it, write the opposite voltage. So if you wrote this reaction backwards, you would put it as an oxidation, and then it would have a positive 0.76 voltage. Um, in this coupled reaction, in this redox reaction, we see that because the zinc likes to actually give up the electrons when coupled with copper, uh, we write the two reactions in this way. We cancel the two electrons that are being added to copper and the two electrons that are being given up by zinc so that the total voltage is 1.1. You would, when you add the two reactions, you would add the potentials. And to remember that, you would say that E0 cell, the voltage generated by a cell of this sort, is equal to the standard reduction potential plus the standard oxidation potential. When we say standard, we mean that the concentrations of all the substances are one mole per liter. On the next one, we have an example of how to balance electrochemical reactions. We have the rules listed in one of the other videos. Um, in this reaction, we're asked to balance the um, coupled reaction of dichromate with iodide ion to produce chromic and iodide, elemental iodide. So what we do is we, combine, we begin by writing the half reactions. In this case, we show dichromate and the chromic cation, and then we balance the oxygens. There are seven oxygens in dichromate, so we have to put seven oxygens on the right-hand side in the form of water. Then, by having put in, introduced seven waters, we have to also account for the fact that now we've got extra hydrogen. So there are 14 hydrogens here attached to the water, so we have to put 14 hydrogens on the left, and we, the way we do that is by adding hydrogen ions. Finally, we look to balance the charge in the half reaction. The net charge on this side, if you don't look at that electron, and this goes six electrons, is 14 minus two, or plus 12. On the right-hand side of the reaction, two times three plus gives you a net charge of plus six. So the difference between these two is plus 12, plus six, the difference of six. So how do you bring this down so that it's the same as that? By adding six electrons. And of course you report the uh, reduction potential there. This is the reduction. Electrons are being added on the left side, so it's a reduction. To balance the iodide reaction, which is an oxidation because it goes to become elemental iodine, uh, you just simply add six electrons because there's six extra negative charges here. There's no charge here, so that the way you balance it is by putting the six electrons on that side. Then when you add these two reactions, anything that appears on opposite sides of the arrows will cancel. So the six electrons cancel here with the six electrons there. We have the um, potential for that uh, standard reduction potential. We've written it backwards because if, if, if you look at the back of the, the index of a book, it'll be written as a, a standard reduction potential, meaning that you'll have three iodines, uh, or iodine plus two electrons gives you iodine. And then they would list this as plus 0.54. But we've reversed it. An interesting thing you might note at this point is that even if you multiply rea a reaction by an integer, if I was to multiply this whole thing by 2, or by 3, or by 10, the voltage remains the same. It's the same voltage per electron. A voltage is basically a measure of how much energy each electron has. Now you can run more current through a wire by, having, by pumping more electrons, but each electron will have the same energy level. And that's what we're talking about in the, with the voltage. When you add the two reactions, the electrons cancel, and we add everything that's on the left-hand side of the arrows on this side, everything's on the right hand side of the arrows will be on that side, and we get a net voltage of 0.79. That's the voltage for the cell. And we recall E naught cells equal E naught reduction plus E naught oxidation. Add those two quantities, you get 0.79.
On the next example, they ask us to balance a, a redox equation where iodine is being reacted with cupric to give you iodate and uh, metallic copper. So the two half reactions here are sorted out by removing anything that contains iodine, iodine and putting it in the first half reaction. Then we take the copper and put it in the other half reaction. How do we balance the iodine? Well, we have iodate forming, which has three oxygens per iodate, but there's two of them. So that means six oxygens are on the right-hand side. That's why we added six waters on the left. That creates an imbalance of now 12 hydrogens, which we rebalance by adding 12 hydrogens on the right in the form of H+. So obviously this reaction is, is occurring in acidic solution. Otherwise, where would you be getting the H pluses? Then we look at the charge. Uh, on this side, you have a charge of plus 10, a net charge of plus 10. So the rebalance it with this side, which has no charge, we add 10 electrons. And now that half reaction is balanced. To balance this half reaction, five coppers, each with a charge of plus 2, and five metallic coppers with no charge at all. So we add 10 electrons to this side, and the balance on this side will be 0 and 0. So no net charge and no balance. Now that both half reactions are also balanced because you have 10 electrons on the left here and 10 electrons on the right there. Remember, with redox reactions, one of the reactions has to be giving, uh, taking electrons, like this one, this is the reduction, it's taking electrons, and one of the reactions has to be an oxidation, giving up electrons. Otherwise, it won't work. One of the reactions is to give electrons, one of the other reactions is to take the electrons. When you add them together, the electrons cancel, and you write everything else. Everything that's on the left, you write here, everything that's on the right is over here. And the net uh, cell potential is negative 1.195 1 1, 1 plus 0.337. So we have a negative cell potential. So what that means in this case is the reaction actually runs the other way. These should be the reactants and these would be the products to give you a positive cell potential. That's all that means. When you have a negative cell potential, it simply means the reaction runs the other way. We have another example using mercury and iodide. We have a mercuric cation being reduced to metal metallic mercury and we have iodide being reduced to iodide. The voltages are recorded here. Notice that uh, to get a reduction and an oxidation, we had to choose which one to flip. And the one we choose to flip is going to be the one that has the lower absolute voltage, because the one with the positive voltage is going to drive the other one with a less positive voltage backwards. That's how you, you choose your criterion for which reaction will be reversed. The one with the more positive voltage will drive the other one backwards when you have to make that kind of decision. So the net voltage here is 0.318. So the voltage of the mercury being reduced is sufficient to drive this reaction backwards. And um, two electrons are accepted by the mercuric cation, and two electrons are released by the iodide as it gets re reduced, as it gets oxidized to um, elemental iodine. So. The net reaction shows no electrons. You have mercuric cation aqueous with iodide, giving you metallic mercury and solid iodine. In the next example, we have sulfuric, uh, sulfurous acid reacting with manganese. Sorry, reacting with uh, manganese. So we have sulfurous going to sulfide, or solid sulfur, sorry. And uh, to balance that, we have three oxygens here and none over there, so that's why we put three waters over here. That creates an imbalance of six hydrogens. Oh, um, because this is a weak acid, the hydrogen stays, stays in the mostly undissociated form. So the two hydrogens there help to counterbalance the fact that there's six hydrogens on the right. So you only put four hydrogens here to balance off the hydrogen. So we have a total of six hydrogens on the left, six hydrogens on the right. Then you balance the charges uh, incurred by putting the four H pluses by putting four electrons. For manganese going to manganese, you simply add two electrons. Then you multiply this whole reaction by two. One way of thinking of electrochemical reactions is to look at them as though they were gears. One of the things that uh, engineering students are aware of is that uh, if you have to mesh two gears, if you count the teeth on each gear, be able to tell what the ratio between the gears is. 
So, for example, if there's 12 teeth on this gear and 24 teeth on the big gear, then you know that for every time this gear turns around once, this one will have to turn around twice. So electrochemical reactions are kind of like gears. To mesh properly, one of them has to turn more often. Now, because this reaction has four electrons and this one has only two, this reaction has to go twice to generate, uh, to accept enough electrons from this one going once. Okay? So to get this reaction to work, we have to multiply the whole reaction by two. And then the electrons will balance and cancel out. That's why I've canceled the four and the two. I'm, I'm not uh, making a mistake in the bookkeeping. It's two times two gives you four. So this four cancels with that four. Then you write the net result down. You see there's four hydrogens there, uh, the two um, manganese, because I've multiplied this reaction with two, and the two mang uh, manganese cations, the two manganese atoms, and so on. And the net voltage is 1.63. You don't multiply the voltage when you multiply the reaction, just to repeat that. It bears repeating. It's an important idea. Doubling the, the amount of, of times the reaction runs does not change its voltage. In this reaction, we have um, N2O and S2O6 reacting. But what happens here is you have both of them are written as reductions. So now we look at this one, we find out that this one has a negative potential. So let's rewrite this one backwards so that it has a positive potential. That way we'll get the electrons appearing on the right-hand side and that's what we did here. So we flipped the second reaction, and then we, uh, we wrote the final result. You'll notice that there was four hydrogens on the left and two hydrogens on the right, so that's why I canceled them both out and wrote two hydrogens on the left to give us the net number of hydrogens. And then the voltage here, because, it was, because this reaction was flipped, that voltage became positive, so 1.77 plus 0.6 gives us 2.37.